Yo, what's up guys, welcome to Fan Modeling Course Part 11. In this part we are going to bake texture maps. So we are going to bake three maps, normal, curvature and ambient occlusion. I'll go through what they do later, but basically uh, I'm going to show you how to do it in Marmoset Toolbag in this software right here. And then I'm going to show you how to do it in Substance uh, Painter, uh, this program as well. So with Marmoset Toolbag 4, it's a paid program, uh, but uh, with Substance Painter, a lot of people are already subscribing to Adobe. So usually a lot of people rely on this program, but uh, the best you'll, you'll get best quality with Marmoset Toolbag. However, if you don't feel like getting it just for that purpose, you don't really need to, you can get away with Substance Painter as well. So let's get started. So first I'm going to, so here is my, uh, here is my model um, area, I mean my folder, and I'm going to first export those two, uh, those two models. So first one is high one. Now don't, <laughs> don't be sure that everything will work first try i'm doing it raw because i want you to see how it happens even if you've done this hundreds of times pretty much sometimes you will still miss something okay so just basically hide fan low select everything in fan high file export and then fbx now it's become a tradition i always forget to enable scribe so <laughs> let me do that uh, there we go. And so here is fan modeling. And basically you can also create new folder and call this uh, uh, high and low. So and basically export it like this. So right now we're exporting high. So just call it fan uh, underscore hi this is very important you want to make sure that you have this suffix at the end underscore hi for marmosa toolback to detect it properly now you select this selected objects and you simply click export fbx now the high poly version might take a little bit so be patient with it uh, in my case it was fast and do the same thing with low poly hide this one enable this select everything File, export, fbx, and now just change the suffix into low. That's selected, and yep, so this is fine. Boom. Okay, so there we go. Now we are going to uh, create one more folder, actually. Uh, so that's the folder which we created. I created it through Blender, actually, this time, but you can just create it through here. It doesn't matter, so just call it textures, like this. It doesn't matter, naming doesn't matter, just name it however you want. Uh, I just like to keep nice structure. It helps uh, if you have a lot of projects going on at the same time. Okay, and yeah, so here we go. Uh, so this is uh, Marmoset toolbag right here. Uh, why can't I... Okay. Let me do this manually. For some reason, it's not allowing me to snap this to the screen. Okay, just bear with me for a moment. There we go. And then this side. Okay, there we go. So yeah, now just basically all you need for baking. So step one, open up the software. Step two, cl click this kind of bread icon in here. You're going to create new group, high poly and low poly. And basically go ahead and uh, change here into this. I mean, yeah, let's just go through all the settings. So first load here your two models. So click on load and make sure that you locate the proper model. So it was, uh, in my case it was fan modeling and then high and low and you can just select both of them and click open okay now first things first so these buttons here h toggles visibility of high poly baker objects as you can see 
and this toggles visibility of low poly baker object. So if you are not sure about something, you can always just hover on it and it's going to explain, give you explanation. That's very useful. So basically, after you import it, make sure that you check and see if the model looks fine. Because you might see some, some issues. Very often, they are caused because you forgot to triangulate everything in here with this modifier. Or something is wrong with UV baking. I, I mean UV unwrapping. To check if everything loaded properly, high and low poly. You can just click on L and it's going to hide it. And if you click on it again, it's going to show it again. So this is our low, low poly version. Uh, let me just find some detail which is not here on low poly. So this button, for example, here, the bottom hole, it's not here. And you can just press L, hide it, press H. It's going to show you the high poly version. You see in this version, we have these holes at the bottom in here. Now again, take a look at this as well. So now we're viewing high poly version. And just take a look at this. Everything seems fine. We don't see like really hard triangulations and stuff. Uh, it will be very visible, trust me. And now here, basically, what happened is uh, here in... So this is baking project, basically. And these different folders are basically different objects. So, for example, this is the bottom. This, These are the buttons. And, for example, if we enable uh, buttons right here, you, you can just hide these and see... Uh, I mean, you can't really hide it through here, but basically you have here buttons high and buttons low. So that's go what's going to happen. In each folder, everything is going to be baked from high poly into low poly. So for buttons from here to here, and so from fan, something like from here to here again. So that's what happens. And these are in different folders because I don't want additional intersections. Well, we're going getting a little bit too technical here. You don't really need to know the whole structure. If you got questions, make sure to write uh, them in the comments below. I'm going to answer and help you out because these, uh, you might have some issues in here uh, and, and it takes some time to just troubleshoot all that stuff. But if you follow the whole tutorial correctly, you, you, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, and if I'll have, if I'll get problems now, you will see how I fix them. Uh, okay, then let's go settings. So samples, pretty much always select 16, format 16 here. Now, these are for different texture sets. You can use different texture sets. We are not going to get into that. For now, what matters is just this resolution. 2K actually for this fan is fine. You could uh, crank it up to 4K, but there is really no need. Uh, or, I mean, it doesn't matter, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to, to do 4K. Now, at the beginning, I said that we need normal map, and then we need curvature, and then we need ambient occlusion. These three maps. Okay, so now let's just see, double check. I think everything is fine. Okay, yeah. So after you went through these settings, just click this. P button, you're going to preview the bake. It's going to give you this error asking, do you want to choose the output? Say yes. And then just locate the folder where you uh, made and call the textures. Now, don't forget to change this to PNG format. And you can rename this part as well, bake, but let's just leave it at default. Now, after you click save, the baking process will start. So there we go. It might take a while. Uh, if you are getting crashes or something like that, very often it works if you don't separate everything in folders. However, you should be fine. Uh, the other thing is that I noticed some people complaining that uh, there are some issues with GPU timing out. So if you are getting problem where you wait, wait, and then it just crashes, in that case, it's possible that there is like a code you know, for your GPU, which basically says that if something is like uh, crack, is like loading for some time, then just simply quit the task. So you can look it up on the internet. 
and you should be able to find some some solutions basically there is one solution to just increase that timeout for your gpu uh okay so it's still it's still baking okay yeah so that's how much time it's baking so I have a GTX uh, 1060, 6 gigabytes of VRAM, that's my GPU, and the process is going to be faster if you have uh, a better graphics card. Okay, so the process is, is done. Usually you notice that it's done by just scrolling your mouse wheel and seeing if it's, if it's responding or not. There's no clear indication. Okay, so there we go. So, so far... I see that it should look fine. Also, I forgot to mention you how you navigate in this view. So if you hold Alt and then left click, you can just uh, rotate the view. And if you hold Alt and middle mouse click, you can pan the view. But probably you, you already figured that out from, from Scribe. That's why I have it there. Okay, and now let's see. Boom. So actually, let, let me just go ahead and hide the... Uh, a high poly version and make sure that you're looking at low poly version like this like before it was like I was thinking what's going on why it's not baking it's because I was viewing high poly version you need to check the low poly version okay there we go so now we have a lot of black areas like this they give a lot of depth to our thingy but I think it's too much it's too strong uh, the map is too strong but overall, you will notice pretty quickly if you get huge errors. In our case, the mod looks clean. There's nothing really uh, wrong with it. Uh, yeah, everything looks fine. But uh, the only thing that's still wrong... Okay, even this is clean. Okay, the only thing that's wrong, I think that the uh, AO map is too strong. We need to fix it also here is some small error usually you shouldn't worry about something like that it's such a small error it doesn't really matter okay so in order to uh, change the AO map ambient occlusion so basically just as an explanation so this is normal map if you click on this default material you're going to see here normal map you're going to see here uh, ambient occlusion as well so this is ambient occlusion map. It's basically black and white map. So now you should see in this folder three textures. If you click on view and then large icons, you're going to see that you have three textures. So that's how normal map looks like. It's just basically purple image. It's, it looks weird, but that's how it is. And this is basically ambient occlusion map. Uh, it basically tells uh, software which areas should be darker. Uh, which area should receive more shadows if you want you can simply drag and drop this in Photoshop and just simply make it lighter that works uh, but you can also find here ambient occlusion click on this settings icon and you can actually increase the ray count as well and then cavity weight so cavity weight is going to basically make it lighter and ray count is going to produce a better quality now, we already baked normal weapon curvature, we don't need that anymore, so that's fine, and right now we change this and we need to somehow apply the changes, uh, bake them into this texture right here. What you can do is just simply go ahead and press this bake button. Just make sure that you deselect normal weapon curvature because we don't need that. Just click bake and give it some time. It's going to do the job. Okay, so if you got some errors or some 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 triangles or some weird stuff, make sure that you go back and redo the UV unwrapping. Very often, it's the UV unwrapping part that's going to cause a lot of issues. It's almost never in Marmos the tool bag. It's pretty much always in blender that's what's causing stuff okay 
I'm actually leaving this real time because I want you to see how long it takes with my graphics card. Uh, so don't think that it's like something is wrong with your blender. It's uh, with your, I mean, one with a tool bag. It's loading too for too long. <coughs> yeah, you see, it takes a while for it to load, even for ambient occlusion. Now, one way to minimize that is to, of course, decrease the ray count and then. Uh, uh, decrease the resolution here uh, but that's if you need 4k resolution you need it you, you you're not going to do, yeah you won't be able to do anything about it okay so it's loading and it's done okay you see now everything is lighter did you you, you saw that change you can just go back to the video and see the change again and now it also update this image right here okay there we go so now everything is better all the spots are fine okay now there is one more thing that i want to show you so marmos the toolback is famous for one thing it has <clears throat> uh instant tweaking basically of the cage I'm not going to get too far into this, but if you click on this baking project, and if you just go here to the bottom, oh, or actually no, not this one. If you just select an object, and then you go into this low right here. For example, I want to see if I can do something about this error. So I basically click on the object and then select from this object to low and then you'll see this option here to paint offset. There's also paint skew option but uh, that usually works if you have some text and it looks like it's skewed or something. Uh, I'll show you how it works later but basically you click paint offset and then you basically just try and paint it and see if something changes. In this case, it's not really doing anything. Here you can change value to one as well. And it's not really changing anything. Uh, but basically you see there is like this cage around. This basically determines where, from where, uh, from how far it, choose, it shoots rays. But all I want you to know is that you can actually, if you get errors, you can also open up this menu and try painting it as well. And then, so painting offset. And then with this, paint skew. Uh, so this value basically, this is going to uh, paint it in one direction. And this is going to paint it in the different direction as well. And the same thing with this. Uh, so maybe I can show you how, how skew painting works on this one. Uh, let's see here, you can change the size as well. So let's see here. I need to change the value. Let's see here. Okay, now, so there is no real skew, but basically you can try this option as well. If you got like uh, janky lines, weird looking lines. Uh, in this case, everything is straight. Everything is nicely baked. Okay. Yeah, like I said, you also have this option and here you can just uh, increase the cage, cage or decrease it. You also have uh, a different option uh, to decrease the whole thing in here. So minimum offset and max offset. So max offset basically increases the distance from which uh, rays are being shot. Okay, but it doesn't really matter. Let's get not let, let's not get too technical about this. It's fine. Uh, yeah, if you still got some issues. Uh, you can look up some tutorials on YouTube, or you can just uh, drop me a comment below. Okay, so that's it actually. You don't need the whole thing anymore. You can just quit like this. And that's it. You got your ambient occlusion, your curvature map, and your normal map. And this curvature map, basically, it's just for Substance Painter. You, you could use it in some cases, but for now, we are going to use it just for Substance Painter, so that it knows where to put details. That's that's pretty much it. So these are the three maps. Okay, so now you baked all these maps right here. You have these three maps. And let's just move on to Substance Painter. 
So open it up like this. And we're basically going to use these three maps. Uh, and then we're going to generate some additional maps. But that's going to be later, the additional map generation. There we go. So now just click File, New, select your low poly mesh of your fan, select your 4K, doesn't really matter. And now go into Import Baked Maps right here. Click Add and locate here your textures. You can select all of them and just click open. You will see them in here and then just basically click OK. Now they won't be applied by default. What you need to do is go here into texture set settings, scroll down and se click this select normal map and it's this one, the purple looking one. Then you need to select your ambient occlusion map. It's this uh, white and black AO and then you need to select curvature map, which is like gray map. Big curvature curl. There we go. Now you won't see the effects, so you need to do something on this view. So if I just move it around, now everything gets applied. Okay, there we go. So that's how it's looking right now. We're going to move on to Substance Painter. And I'm going to show you how to do the same exact process in Substance Painter. Right. And now <clears throat> you have to do the same process. So first, uh, like I said at the very beginning, you need to export everything from here. Low poly. And make sure that you give it name underscore low. And the same thing with the high poly. Hide this. Open this. Select everything. And just again file export. FBX. And then you make sure that it's named fan underscore high. High. Select the object only. And you just basically export it. I'm not going to do that because I already done that. Uh, here. So here are those two files. Fan high and then fan low. Now, so these are the textures for Marmazet. I'm going to just call it like that. And so for baking, you need to create a new folder. Textures. Uh, textures. Uh, and I'll just call it Substance. Because it's Substance Painter. And so for this, actually, here, uh, you will get all the textures in here. I'll tell, I'll tell you about that later. So here we go. This is Substance Painter. <laughs> Click File and then New. Select resolution here 2 or 4K. Let's actually just do 4K. It's fine. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, here you click on Select and you locate your low poly version, which is. Uh, here, fan underscore low. And now, also, uh, okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, everything else is fine in here. You can just click OK. There we go. Okay, so for Substance Painter, what you do. Okay, so if, again, you've never seen Substance Painter before, you can go ahead and look up some beginner, beginner tutorials on YouTube and then come back once you know how the interface works. Just look up some interface tutorials. I'm going to still explain uh, everything what I'm doing, but yeah. Uh, you still need some previous knowledge of the software because this is not like fully beginner course. Okay, so to bake uh, those maps in Substance Painter, what you need to do is just click on here, Texture Set Settings, scroll down, and you'll find this big mesh maps. Click on that. And there we go. The interface looks very similar to Marmoza Toolbag. At the bottom left, you have here uh, which maps you want to bake. So in our case, uh, we need to bake only normal map. 
ambient occlusion map and curvature so just deselect everything else like this and then you remember for ambient occlusion you can increase the ray distance as well so it's higher quality okay there we go now uh, to determine the size for all the textures you need to just go ahead and click on common settings and then output settings here select 4k this is going to be the texture size um, just like here we had 4k textures the same thing here uh, of course for a game engine you would go lower than this because this would be overkill for sure it would just go maybe 2000 but this is fine usually you can just do it's better to do 4k and later you can just down downgrade the uh, textures but yeah that's a whole nother topic just for now do 2 or 4k and it's going to be fine okay now for the normal map make sure that you here in common settings it's not under normal, it's in common settings. Here you have this option, high poly parameters. Use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And you basically need to select this and click on this list icon in here. And here you're going to select fan underscore high. So this is going to tell uh, Substance Painter that it needs to bake a normal map from this model right here okay everything looks fine here let's just simply hit uh, bake selected textures and it's kind of cool effect you can see this real time how everything is getting baked okay let's just wait for it there you go Okay, that's our ambient occlusion map, and this is curvature map. <clears throat> there we go. And now just return to painting mode. Now you're going to see all those maps. They are going to appear right here. Now what you can do is just press... Uh, it was F2, yeah, to hide our UVs. And that's that. So here we go. Now you're going to see this normal map got applied, ambient occlusion map got applied, as well as curvature got applied. And if you see here, you can see some stuff in here. But the quality is... There is a huge difference in quality right here. Okay, so without normal map... Oh wait, wait a second, it wasn't applied for sure, for some reason. Uh, let's do that again. Okay, what? What the hell is going on? Okay, so AO map was applied. Curvature map was applied as well. Huh. normal map doesn't seem to be really working something is wrong with it okay let's try just rebaking the normal map again and seeing uh, what happens Okay, I don't think that this was baked still. Okay, what you can do is just uh, export this normal map. To do that, you just basically locate it in... It should be somewhere here. Or you can just actually look up normal and you should find it somewhere in here there it is just right click export resource select folder and that's it it should be exported there we go so that's our normal map now if we, we open it up something seems off with it 
it's too plain it shouldn't be like this okay so let's figure out what's wrong with it now it's good because it's in real time you see that everything doesn't work first try okay common settings um, Oh, wait a second, you don't need to select this. My bad, yeah. Don't select this check mark. You see, it's been a while since I baked and I forgot that. Uh, because I always use Marmo as a tool bag. So yeah, that's a good lesson for you. It clearly says <laughs> that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. If you don't check this, then it's going to use this mesh instead. Okay, it's kind of counterintuitive, but yeah have this deselected and then just hit bake selected textures right now <clears throat> now it's doing it properly okay now just return and here you go now you have this uh, map baked right here if we disable it you see now it's gone and now it appears usually after you select in here you need to go to the view in here and do something in order to see the changes but yeah so the quality is significantly worse when you zoom in if you zoom out i mean it's still not that bad from this distance you can see a nice touch right here around these buttons in here okay there we go and now this thing right here uh we got some error in here so let's see if it's caused by a normal map. Yes, it is indeed. So let's go back uh, and see. Big mesh maps. Okay. So I think that it's just uh, going to be cage, some cage options. And in this case, just go ahead and play with these settings. So max rear distance and max frontal distance. Let's just go ahead and decrease this. Make it just pop out a little bit. Okay. Let's go back. See how we're looking. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're still getting the same error in here. Which is quite weird. Huh. Why is it happening? Oh, I think it's because... Um, okay, I see, I see. I think it's because it's not really going as deep. So let's see dilation width. Maybe this one will fix that. And it's just basically this. You're, you're just going to play with some settings. Okay. Still not fixed. Huh. That's interesting. Let's increase the rear distance and this distance just for a test. Sometimes it's useful to just increase something a lot and see if it's if it helps or not. In our case, yes, it did help. Uh, however, the yeah, you see the quality is just way different. Yeah, <laughs> the quality gets harmed a lot. But also it's ambient occlusion map, we have to rebake it as well. Just rebake all maps after we change uh, these cage settings. So again, AO and curvature, select all of them and just hit bake again. Yeah, so Substance Painter isn't as good as uh, Marmoza tool bag in baking. Now you actually could get good result if you use the thing called cage. It's right here, use cage this option. But we're not going to get to the, into that in this video. But basically you would have a new model, you would scale it up and just basically use that as a cage. Uh, but yeah, that just additional hassle, you don't really want to waste too much time on doing that. Okay, there we go. So now you see this is good right here. This thing at the back is good. And let's just see how we're looking, how all the other parts are looking. Okay, so clearly there is too much overlapping. And this just means that we need to decrease this rear distance and this frontal distance. 
because stuff just starts overlapping way too much you see okay that's good uh let's try and bake it right now you need to find like a sweet spot where you don't get artifacts anywhere else but this is fine but this looks good as well okay let's just wait so this is our AO map okay we were lucky because uh, we managed to prepare everything first try we never had to go back to blender to fix something but yeah there we go now that's good now if you're bothered by this circle right here you see there's weird circle what you can do is in high poly because in low, on low poly it's just completely deleted there is no hole in here but for high poly what you could do is basically go into edit mode here select all these faces here at the back okay so you can select them by just shift clicking then or shift clicking all of them i won't do that but uh, for demonstration uh, and then just uh, hold control and pl click click plus few times until you select all those edges right here except this one so that much and then just g and then move it outwards like this uh, g x in our case like this just move everything out leave a smaller gap in here also you might want to select only these areas right here if i press c this one and this one and then g and then gx to kind of make it flatter like this like this here it's going to help with the with that huge circle right here this circle appears basically because each uh, because of this cube basically so in uh, yeah, it's just distance, that's how it works, and <laughs> calculation. It's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, reducing the depth of these things here would help you out. Uh, I'm not going to bother with it. It doesn't look bad to me from this distance, something like this, because that's the closest distance from which this model is going to be viewed. Okay, now what you could do is you could go ahead and uh, locate all these maps so like normal map uh, and it's here and then ambient occlusion uh, this one right here and then curvature right here and you could just go ahead and export everything oops that's wrong folder you could just export everything in this uh, folders substance textures we are not going to do it because uh, we still need them in this file right here we still need them so basically we would just import them anyways at this stage okay so now here is where the workflows meet again after you have normal map ambient occlusion and curvature you will need to bake some additional maps so let's just go bake mesh maps deselect these three maps because we don't need that anymore and now it's just pretty straightforward these maps are just basically going to help substance painter to know where to add details and stuff uh, when you're applying smart materials so basically just select world space uh, normal uh, position thickness and height maybe it doesn't really matter you can select it uh, it's it's not really needed but yeah there we go these maps and then just click big selected maps okay give it some time i like how it shows basically real time when it's generating that's a cool visual effect there you go okay i'm actually going to move this scribe right here okay and after you go back you see all these maps right here 
Also, don't forget to save your file. So just hit file, save as, locate your folder where you have your project, and just basically type in substance or something like that. Call it however you want. In the next episode, we are going to just do the whole texturing in Substance Painter. And yeah, if you got any questions, make sure to post them in comments below. And yeah, give it a give. If you enjoyed the video, like it. If you are following the course, subscribe. And if you like my content, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. See ya, guys.